This video is going to be a refresher of basic Python syntax and data types. If you already feel comfortable programming Python, feel free to skip this video and the lecture this week. We're going to be doing some pretty basic stuff. If you'd like a refresher on if you'd like a refresher on Python syntax, then this is for you. So what we're going to get to in this video are installation of Python, getting started running Python code, basic variables and types in Python, and control structures for controlling the, the flow of your code. And finally, some basics of functions. So you can get Python in a lot of different ways. You can check the official installation on python.org, but we recommend for this class using Anaconda because it's a good way to get not just Python, but also a bunch of packages used for scientific computing. And Anaconda is free on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So quickly, you can install Anaconda from the Anaconda website. And for this class, you want to make sure that you've got at least Python 3.6. You can figure out what Python version you have uh, at the command line by running the uh, command python3 and then dash dash version. So in this case, I have python 3.8.5. Installing packages. So if you have installed with Anaconda or Conda, then you have the Conda package manager, which can install packages such as Python packages, but also Python itself and a bunch of C libraries and, and other things. You can search for packages, install them and see what you have installed. And if you're thinking of just Python packages, or if you installed Python by a mechanism other than Conda, then you've always got pip, um, which can install only Python packages. Um, and similar to Conda, you can search and install and then use lists to see what's installed. Getting help. So when we're writing code, a lot of what we do is looking up um, information about what we're trying to do. Uh, so a few good sources are the Python uh, library reference has the Python standard library is very well documented. And that includes a tutorial for getting to know Python. I think Python is a nice book for, for getting more familiar with Python in more detail than we'll cover here. All right. Our first Python encounter. So we're going to start with a scientific hello world program because this is targeted at scientific computing. So just like we saw with bash, um, Python is an interpreted language, which means you can write a file, a text file with some code in it and you pass it, you can pass it to the Python interpreter and it will evaluate it. And the difference between a Python script and a bash script is just that the syntax uh, uses Python syntax instead of a bash syntax. So if we take this text and we store it in a file hw.py, so py is the standard extension for Python files, and we can execute it by passing it to the Python interpreter, just like we could pass our bash scripts to our bash interpreter. And then we pass additional arguments on the command line, in this case, 0 0.8. And the result is the text, hello world, the sign of what you gave me is the value there. You can also make these scripts executable, in which case you can pass the path to the script and then an argument instead of having to explicitly invoke the Python interpreter. So looking through what's in this script, so that first line is that what's called a shebang line. This is just like we had to say, this is how the system says, what interpreter should I use to execute the rest of the file? In this case, we're using Python 3. And the first thing the script does is use imports to import some functions that we're going to use. So Python is organized in modules that you import from, which define functionality in their namespace into there's math for math functions, there's sys for interacting with the system. In this case, we're using the sign function from math to compute the sign from sys we're using sys.argv to retrieve the command line arguments so the first thing we do is we get that list of command line arguments get the first argument so this counts python counts from zero so this argument one is that number that we gave and argument zero is actually the script itself the command line is always a list of strings and we cast that to a float and store that in the variable x and note that python variables don't need to be declared Assigning to a name is all you need to do to declare a variable. And then finally, we print the result. So we're using the print function and Python format strings, which means a string prefixed with this F quote. And here's some text, hello world and sign. And then inside these braces, we have expressions. So here the expression X means take our variable X and convert it to a string and put that right here. And here's an expression that actually calls a function, take the sign of X and put that string here. And we can also use colons for string formatting if we wanna do restrict the result of the sign to three decimal points. Now we're gonna talk about Python variables and some basic data types. There are several basic types used in Python. Um, strings for storing text, numbers, and then several kinds of basic collections. So a collection is a category of type that will come up a lot. So tuples are a static collection. Uh, of a few things. Um, lists are generally a sequence of the same kind of thing. Dictionaries are key value pairs for when you look up, want to look up something by, a, by name. And sets are unique collections, usually of the same kind of thing again. Strings for storing text information are put in quotes, either single or double quotes. Python doesn't care. You can also have triple quotes. So if you put the same quotation symbol three times in a row, then you can have many lines of text before you need to end the string. That's useful for 
big blocks of text if you need them. If you try to do arithmetic with a string, multiplication or addition, that results in concatenation of strings. A string plus another string concatenates those two strings, as well as multiplication takes one string and then repeats it several times and returns the result. Slicing is something that comes up a lot in containers. So slicing is using this item access notation with the brackets. And it says, given two indices, uh, a start and an end, give me everything in between those. So here we're saying, give me from item two up to, but not including item six. So the length is always four, the difference between these two numbers. And if the start is unspecified, it starts at the beginning. If the end is unspecified, it goes until the end. And you can also use negative indexing to count from the back. So negative one means the last item, negative two, second to last, et cetera. So taking this string and then slicing from one to negative two, say start at item one and go up to and stop at negative two. Strings are immutable. You can't change them. So you can't take the character at index one and replace it with the character X. So if you want to change them, what you have to do is use concatenation operations to create a new string and store that. You can store that in the same variable to have the same effect as modifying something in place. And here are some useful methods for taking strings, inspecting them, modifying them, splitting them, casting them to lower and uppercase, et cetera. Our next data type is the list. So a list is generally a mutable sequence of the same kind of thing. They might be file names, objects, numbers. Generally, when you have a collection of things that you want to do the same thing to, that's what you'll usually use a list for. They don't necessarily have the same type. You can put any kind of thing in there, but in practice, they're generally going to be the same kind of thing because of what lists are usually used for. But all they have to be are Python things. You can have a list of anything. So operations on a list, just like strings, because lists are also collections, they're ordered collections. You can get the first item, item zero, slicing. You can say, get everything from item one to the end, and then concatenation. So you can take your list and you can add another list and repeat that other list the same as we saw with strings. Unlike strings, lists are mutable. So here we have a list of three numbers and we can take item two and just replace it with a different number. And we can, there are methods for adding to the end, extending, etc. So there are a lot of useful methods to work with lists, slicing, indexing, checking for contents, counting things, getting their length, etc. Tuples are our next type. Functionally, it can be hard to distinguish between tuples and lists because the only real difference between lists and tuples is that tuples are immutable, like strings, so you can't reassign items in your tuple, but the use case is a bit different. So usually you use, just like you use a list for a sequence of things you want to do the same kind of operation to, like a list of files you want to process, a tuple is usually a single thing that might have multiple components components, but you didn't feel like creating a fancy object for. So maybe a tuple represents, you know, a temperature and a location for a measurement or something like that. So it's a collection of things that can be different types, but generally you might have a bunch of similar tuples that have the same shape, you know, string, number, number, string, and a cheat sheet of tuples in general. Tuples have most of the same methods as list, minus all the methods that change the list. So it doesn't have append or extend, but all the things that return a new tuple or adding and slicing and all these things are, are all the same as lists. Python dictionaries are our next basic data type. So just like we had with a list, we can find items with a key, and that key was always an integer, um, which meant the index in the sequence. Python dictionaries are similar, but instead of being an ordered collection where you address them by their integer index, when you store items in a dictionary, you store them with a key, and then you look them up again with the same key. So here we've got two dictionaries, a phone book dictionary where the keys are names, and then the values are numbers. And we have a, a dictionary where the keys are strings that maybe represent words. And then we have a definition. So one is a number house is a building to live in, kitchen, maybe we don't know what a kitchen is. So we can look up John Doe in the phone book, which gives a phone number, and we can look up Tebana in my dict, which gives a key error, meaning it, that key was not found in the dictionary. Dictionaries are mutable like lists, so we can say make store in this key, this value. Update is a method that's given one dictionary in another dictionary, take all the keys and values in the other dictionary and add them to my dictionary. And then you can use del to remove items based on their key. Here's a cheat sheet for lots of ways to make dictionaries and then access things, store new values, iterate through them, etc. So our common data structures, we have numbers, integers, floating point numbers, complex numbers, sequences, strings, lists, tuples. We didn't mention sets, but sets are like lists or tuples, but instead of being ordered, they're unordered. So use sets only for things like, have I seen this before? Is this item in the set? And then computing intersections and differences and things where you only care about presence, you don't care about order. And then mappings, we have dictionaries for storing things under a key, which can be a string or any hashable. Next, we're going to talk about control structures. By this, I mean conditions and loops, things that let you start doing some logic in your programming. In Python, conditionals and branching look like this. So you have if, and then a condition, and then a colon, and then the scope governed by that condition is indented, generally for spaces by convention, but any amount of space is technically valid. And then you can have else if conditions for alternate conditions. And the condition can be any Python expression that evaluates 
relates to a truthy value. So almost everything in Python can be cast to a Boolean value. Most things evaluate to true. To evaluate to false, it usually means it's either equal to zero or it's empty or something like that. So here's an example. We've got i is a number, 10, and we have these conditions. If i is less than zero, it's a negative number. Else, if i is between zero and 20, we can say it's a small number. Otherwise, say it's a large number. So we ran this with 10, we can run it with minus five. Minus five is negative, and we can run it with 25, taking each of those branches. Python variables are strongly typed. So even though we don't have to declare the type, once they exist, they have a type that we can inspect. So we can use if statements to say like, if I was given an integer, do something. If it was a list, do something else, etc. In this case, you can pass a tuple of items to his instance, say, was it either a list or a tuple? While loops, let us repeat while a condition is true. For instance, counting down. For loops are really common in Python. You take any iterable, such as a list, a string, a dictionary, you can say for element in some container, and then that block will be evaluated with elements defined as each element in that container. So here we have a list of strings, and we say for item in our shopping list, we print that we need to remember to buy that item. So you can see, remember to buy tea, butter, milk, etc. If you want to iterate over a sequence of numbers, there's a built-in command called a range that returns an iterable over that range. And the last basic construct we have is Python functions. So a function allows you to encapsulate a task given some inputs, produce some outputs. So as an example, we're going to write a function that takes a string and splits it at a given character. So what this function does is it finds the location of that character. If it found it, return the string split at the location of that character. And if it didn't find it, return the string itself and then the empty string. It's like splitting at the very end. Defining the function um, just makes that available. It's like we've written down the, the recipe for doing a task, but we haven't actually used it for anything. So we have to call our function to have any actual effect. So here we define the message and then we call our function with the parentheses, say given our message and look for the letter i and get the result. So you can see we get hi, so up to and including the i and then what comes after the position. In general, say def, the name of your function, and you can have positional arguments, and you can also have keyword arguments with the equal sign. If there's an equal sign, those arguments have default value. So in general, you can pass most arguments either positionally or by keyword. Some are keyword only, some are positional only. Arguments that have a default can be left out. So here we're calling arg1 is 1.0 and arg3 is i. But we've left out arg2, which is okay because it has a default value. The main other restriction is that positional arguments have to come before keyword arguments. So I can't have arg3 equals this and then x because who knows what x should refer to. In Python functions, always return exactly one thing. And this is where we come up with what tuples are for. Maybe you feel like you want to return two things, but in Python, you only ever can return one thing. But a tuple is one thing that can contain multiple things. So here we want to return x, y coordinates. We feel like we have two return values, but we actually have one return value, and that's the tuple with two items in it. Here we have our function, and when calling that function, so coordinates returns the tuple, x, y, and we can get those items out, or we can use the more Pythonic notation, x, comma, y equals coordinates. And so this is taking the tuple returned by coordinates and then unpacking the items in that to perform two assignments to x and y. So that's it for today. To summarize, we've covered some basic Python syntax and execution. We looked into some of the default types in Python and some basics of control flow with conditions and loops and how to define and call functions. In the next video, we'll go a little deeper into objects and classes and how everything in Python is an object and some of the consequences of that.